years of living in the UK, architect Douglas Young returned to his native Hong Kong with fresh eyes and a renewed appreciation for the culture of his home. Tapping his design talent, he soon co-founded G.O.D., Goods of Desire, a brand that specializes in fashion, home, and lifestyle items, all with a cheeky twist. Goods of Desire welcomes customers into six stores citywide, collaborates with major retail brands, and continues to celebrate Hong Kong's unique East meets West culture. Young's style entreats each of us to live with a dash of humor. I'm here with Douglas Young, co-founder of Goods of Desire. Thank you so much for inviting me here to one of your six fabulous stores in Hong Kong. Thank you very much. Welcome, President Wallace. So let's start with your name, Goods of Desire. Goods of Desire, G-O-D. yes. Actually, it's a Cantonese name. Judy means live better. Live better. So it's really simple, live better, right? Everybody needs to live better. So I remember telling people, I want to call my company Live Better, you know, Judy. And so many people say, what, Judy? <laughs> so that, okay, may as well call it G-O-D, you know, so because it's kind of naughty in, in English, you know, it's easy to remember. I, I never say it's God, it's always G-O-D. And then people say, oh, well, what is G-O-D? Then I say, oh, well, goods of desire. <laughs> it sort of evolved that way, but it started actually in the, as a Chinese name first. Why do you think so many Western people are so attracted to your stores? We have ancient traditions from this part of the world, but I think not many people taking these traditions and injecting modernity into it. And sometimes we are kind of doing things a little bit edgy. Some yeah. people may be slightly offended by it, I don't know. <laughs> a little controversial. People pay attention. Celebrating 20 years, what is one of your creations that you were surprised at how successful it was over right. the years? It's one of our early signature prints. We call it the Yao Mai Tei print. These are pictures that I took as a hobby. And I've always been interested in these buildings in Hong Kong where people change the windows and add things to it and put signs and hang their laundry and all that. I mean, to a lot of local people, it's like a mess. But to my eyes, it's, it's what Hong Kong is about. It's a sort of mess, but with a sense of order. Let's talk about some of your favorite collaborations. They asked us to design a Starbucks in Hong Kong that is not like a regular Starbucks. They wanted it to be as if it's from Hong Kong. It was really difficult because we broke every single Starbucks <laughs> rule and it was a fun project. How does your background in architecture inform your design and your whole store? I often wondered, you know, I've, I've spent seven years studying architecture. Have I wasted all my time, you know? But actually, when I think about it, I'm still in a way an architect at heart because the things that I'm dealing with, moods and atmospheres and materials, these are all architecturally related topics. It's just that the scale is different, but the thinking behind it, the thought process is exactly the same. How does Hong Kong's culture influence your design? So I was born in Hong Kong, but I was lucky enough to be able to live in the UK for a long time. When I came back, I realized, wow, Hong Kong is really special. And that has always been um, my power or my energy behind what I do. I'm always bringing out what is special about Hong Kong to to people. Hong Kong's culture is not just about China. We were for 150 years a British colony, and yet we are also part of China. And Hong Kong has always been very international. This is why when SCAD decided to set up campus in Asia, it, Hong Kong it really is the place. I find it just really inspiring. So thank you so much for joining me today. Now we get to do the fun stuff. Can we please go shopping? Yes, okay. let's go. <laughs> let's go. Douglas, you're known for your t-shirts, yeah. among other things. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed you're wearing one. Oh, yes, of yeah. course. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> so, moment tai la means no, not a problem. No problem. Means, yes, so, no problem. yeah, if somebody asks you to, can you show me around, you can say, moment tai la, you know. Uh, yeah. So tell me about these images that you painted. So this is original watercolor I did, and it's just a scene that I remember when I was a kid. Really? You don't get these anymore. I mean, like mm -hmm. the lion dance. It's kind of like the matador, you know, the yes, bull, yeah. bull, but Chinese version. Yeah. <laughs> this is such an ingenious design, so I love every one of them. I mean, tell me a little bit about okay. this. So, um, it's just a way of stacking cups. These are kind of like made to look like neon signs, but the sayings are kind of like 
uh, local things. This looks like a traditional toy. You can see he's playing a guitar, actually. It's an electric guitar. So it's kind of like with a twist if you look okay. closely. Yes, that's what so I thought. So he's, he's working on the, the computer. You see the computer there? <laughs> we always try to introduce some sort of... Oh, something human. unexpected. Yeah, unexpected. Fun. Into it. I love it. This is Mahjong. Yeah, uh, the most popular pastime in Hong Kong. Douglas, I've had a great time. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs>